cheap, fast, reliable. You can only pick two. If you're a car person, you know this saying, and you know that you'd rather have fast and reliable. So we end up spending a lot of money on getting something that's unique or fast or enjoyable. And you know the story. Somebody goes out and buys the $30,000 car. They modify it to the hilt. They drop another 20 or 30 or $40,000 into it. It's awesome. They drive it for a few years. And then when it comes time to sell it, they lose a ton of money because you don't get the money back from all those modifications. Now, I think a fun, fast car is worth it. I just don't think it's worth you going broke. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about ways that you can have a lot of fun driving and not go broke. Quick introduction. I'm Brendan and I've had a number of fun cars that I've modified and really enjoyed largely. <laughs> I had a first gen Focus ST that I modified heavily for track days. Had a ton of fun with that car and loved it. Then I bought a Nissan 240SX. It was a 1989 S13 coupe and it was the worst vehicle I've ever owned by far. I also had a 2004 Mazda Speed Miata and NBs are not big on the inside. I'm six foot five. I paid to have a Sparco Evo 2 mounted to the very bottom. He had to modify the transmission tunnel, get the thing mounted in there super low. And even then I had to take out the cushion on the bottom of the seat and just sit on the steel bottom of that seat. But it was totally worth it. That car was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It, put RPF ones on it, RPF ones, all the things. I understand this world of modifying cars, wanting something that's fun and interesting and exciting. And I also understand that the culture around modifying cars is such that it's not concerned at all with your long-term finances or your financial health in general. It's push it till the motor blows, then build the motor. It's, oh, well, I, I tore a bumper off. I'll get another one. Whatever this thing needs to be awesome, I'm willing to hemorrhage the money to get there. And I just don't think that we have to do that to have a lot of fun with cars. So how to not go broke while modifying your car. Number one, decide on the purpose of the car as fast as you can. Immediately, or starting today, decide the direction of the car. Is this a time attack car for road racing? Is this a drag strip car that's made for eighth mile? Is this going to be a half mile roll racing car and it needs to be set up totally different than those other two? Is it just a comfortable daily driver that you want to look nice, but to be always comfortable, always quiet, always actually nice to drive? You know, these are very different directions and it's based on your taste, whatever you like, but it can be very expensive to change directions if your comfy GT car all of a sudden needs to become that half mile car or vice versa. Step two, stoically, soberly, critically, take a look at your finances. I know this part isn't super fun, but take a look. What do you have coming in? What do you have going out? And then what's the budget that you really want left over for fun stuff like a car? Some quick questions to ask. How much debt do you have? Do you have an emergency fund saved up in cash? Do you have any high interest debt? And are there any large expenses coming up outside of your engine build plans or whatever else is on the horizon for the car that you know about that you should plan for. Number three, avoid debt more than first gen CTSVs. Avoid debt more than an 18 year old trying to sell you his 200,000 mile RX-8 that burns oil. Get away from debt. It is the worst. That new turbo kit is not worth paying 22% interest to Visa. Those new wheels are awesome, but they're not worth hemorrhaging money and ending up paying a ton more for them than the MSRP price. Cash or nothing. Number Number four, decide on a budget. Wait, don't click off yet. Just, just roll with me here. Now that you've done those first three steps, you know where you stand financially, you've avoided debt, and you have kind of a budget set up for your life in general, you know kind of where you stand financially. Now decide what is worth spending on this car. Now, if you're starting out with a completely bone stock NA Miata 1990, and you just have to have a competitive half mile airstrip car, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. You've got to know that that's a 10, 15, $20,000 build minimum, and that's if you're super handy. So maybe it's time to look at a different platform to start from. Maybe it's time to reconsider because if your budget is only 4,500 bucks, I don't know, might not make it. It does feel stifling and annoying. I agree with you, but this can save you a ton of trouble ahead of time if you kind of set this up in the first place. Let's throw this out as an example. You've got a 2015 BRZ. Your uncle's got a base model came in with a 2.7 liter and you're trying to keep up with him in the canyons. Now, if you've got a budget of 3,500 bucks to spend, don't go out and buy those cool tail lights and that lip spoiler and a new shift knob. None of those things are going to help you towards your ultimate goal of canyon carving. You've got to go get some coilovers, throw on some KW Variant 1s, get some PS4Ss on some RPF 1s, some Hawk pads, maybe some nice dot five fluid, and go out there and give him fits in the canyons. But if you get distracted along the way, you're going to end up spending way more and you might not even get to your goal. So stay focused on that goal that you set up in step number one. Number five, stop when you 
you hit the limit. I'm already assuming here that you're gonna hit the spending limit and you're gonna have to choose a point at which to stop. So go ahead and when you hit that $3,500, $4,500, $10,000 limit, just stop. Like most of us aren't in a competitive race series or most of us don't have the kind of budget that a lot of these shops do. So it's not a, a win or die trying situation for us. And that kind of goes into the next tip, which is number six. And this can get expensive depending on what you're doing. Buy a car that doesn't need modifying. If you're bound and determined to race, go on sites like racingjunk.com, maybe bring a trailer. Even Craigslist oftentimes will have used race cars that already have the mods done. They've got the safety stuff in there. They've got the potentially the spec suspension if you need to worry about that. Like a turnkey race car can save you a ton of time and money. If it's a street car we're talking about, obviously buying a fun, fast, and reliable street car can get pretty expensive, but just take that into consideration. Maybe you can end up saving yourself a lot of headaches over the course of time if you buy the car that's almost done and doesn't really need a lot of mods. Number seven, consider other means of venting your driving passions. If you're open to it, you can have like a full-blown iRacing sim rig for four grand that's incredible, that's really awesome. Now, I've considered it, it doesn't really float my boat, so I haven't gone in that direction, but a lot of people really like it and even a lot of competitive drivers use it because they can get used to that track or they can get used to a new car setup. Another option that I have done and I've loved is renting a race car or renting a real go-kart, like outside, gas engine, full slicks, on asphalt, not the indoor, electric, on slick concrete situation. Now I've rented a couple different race cars. Both times it was awesome. One time I had professional instruction at Chuck Walla Valley Raceway. Another time it was just me out on track. Just getting out and having the experience of driving a full-blown race car on a track is incredible. The few hundred bucks for the weekend, plus another few hundred bucks to rent the car is still a lot cheaper than most mods. So you come away with this really incredible experience with this car that's already better than yours probably, and it's a lot cheaper. Also, a buddy and my dad and I went and we rented go-karts a few years ago. And that was completely nuts. Like if you've not driven a proper go-kart, it is like nothing else. Like everything feels like a school bus after you've driven a go-kart because the experience is so intense. It's so visceral. It is like nothing else I've ever driven. And that was also a few hundred bucks. Tip number eight, stay in your lane. Ignore the hype, ignore the social pressure, ignore that little voice in the back of your head that's tempting you to do more and more to your car because then somehow people will notice it or people will repost your pictures or whatever. Do what you love because ultimately, it's not worth throwing your whole financial life down the drain just to try and keep up with something that's really cool or to go a little bit faster. If you haven't done a ton of research into financial independence until this point and you just found me, go ahead and check this out because there's a lot of ways that normal people making normal amounts of money can actually turn around their financial situation and build a lot of wealth without getting into sketchy stuff or weird investments or anything else like very standard run of the mill basic stuff can really help you. Check out my other videos and check out some of the personal personal finance and financial independence subreddits on Reddit. That stuff is great. I've also got some books that I can recommend if you're interested, but investigate. I just think it'd be more awesome overall if you came away with this experience of having owned a few fun cars and you're financially fit instead of having slightly more cool cars and you're in financial ruin, essentially. Next tip is to ignore the sunk cost fallacy. I know that we all kind of get into this with our cars because we think, well, we're already taking the transmission out, so I may as well replace the clutch, flywheel, throw out bearing, maybe I need a new shifter and I better check the bushings down there and do this. And you know, we just have this kind of mentality of, well, I'm, I'm already this far in, so I may as well keep going. That doesn't have to be the case. And I think that gets us into a lot of trouble when it comes down to it because we rationalize just crazy amounts of spending. And that transmission example is, is mine. I did that, but <laughs> I think that it happens all the time and we overspend and then we end up regretting it. Just remember that eventually it's okay to pull the plug, dump that car, unload it, get into something else, and start over. The final tip is to actually search for a car that is intentionally very cheap to modify. There are a few different cars out there that you can throw tires on and a tune and be done. Like the thing can kind of do everything. It's awesome. It's a lot of fun. It's still quite reliable. So I'm considering that for the future for me because I don't want to get into a huge whole project. I want to be able to turn the key and drive and have a good time. So I'm intentionally looking for vehicles that are easy on consumables, easy on my wallet when it comes to reliability, and and don't need a whole lot of modification. That's it for this one. Hopefully it was helpful. If it was, don't forget to invest in the like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.